series uh, this afternoon, uh, we have the word marriage. And there's a lot within that word that I can't get in within the short 50-minute devotional that I have this afternoon. Um, man, y'all are tired. You didn't catch that. Uh, um, but there, there's a lot that's packed within that word. And the reason is, is because since the very beginning, marriage has been at the heart of human civilization. It's the basis and the foundation for human flourishing. Every society has placed a, an emphasis on it for a reason. Because they realize that as the home goes, so goes the nation. And so marriage has played an important part within every culture and within every uh, nation of peoples. In fact, Socrates once said, I believe every man should get married. Because if he has a good wife, he'll be happy. If he has a bad wife, he'll become a philosopher. <clears throat> and so, but the problem is, as, as important as we think marriage is, uh, marriage is tough. Marriage is difficult. And you don't really always know how difficult it is until you're married. And the struggles that come with that. And... Um, the problem is, the reason that marriage is so difficult is because you have two people who are bringing in their own weaknesses, their own baggage, their own sins, and they're coming together and they're trying to make a home. And when you have two people who have their own weaknesses and their own sins, sometimes things can get very difficult. And they're even made more difficult because there are so many outside voices that are trying to tell us how to do marriage, what's important in marriage, uh, what's not important, what you need to focus on. There's so many outside voices, even for the church and even for Christians. And sometimes when you listen to those voices, they can be very destructive to a home. And so I just want us to read James chapter 3, a passage that really has nothing to do with marriage contextually, but I think is very valuable in the context of our marriages to discover what James has to say about listening to the right voice in our, in our relationships. James chapter 3, and we'll start in verse 13. <clears throat> Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds and the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is first pure and then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. From James' perspective, there's two different voices that we all listen to. The heavenly voice or the earthly voice. And there's two different types of wisdom. There's earthly wisdom and there's heavenly wisdom. And he begins by saying the earthly wisdom has two key components. Selfish ambition and jealousy. And he says that if you have selfish ambition and jealousy, it will completely ruin your life. And notice that the key result that he focuses in on of selfish ambition and jealousy is division. Is division. Now that's true within the church and is true within the home. That if you have two people coming into a marriage or who are already married and one of them or both of them is more concerned about the progress of their own selfish desires or they're maybe uh, jealous of certain things from their other spouse or from others that's going to create division. That's going to divide that home. One of the first things that I tell couples in premarital counseling is that your spouse or your future spouse, this person that's sitting across from you, cannot possibly bear the weight of your happiness. They can't do it. It's just, they're not made to do it. And that's one of the issues is that a lot of people going into marriage thinking that that person is going to fulfill their every desire and need. And then they get into marriage and they find out they're a person. And they have weaknesses and they have failings and, and they struggle. 
And so when, when you come into marriage expecting your selfish desires to be fulfilled within the context of this covenant, you're going into this with the wrong orientation because that's actually not the ultimate purpose of marriage. The, act, the ultimate purpose of marriage is not your happiness. And that's a surprise. Now our happiness is tied into our marriage. But the ultimate goal of our marriage is for the glorification of Christ. You see that in Ephesians chapter 5 where we see that God created marriage to show us something about his love for his people. So my goal within my marriage is actually sanctification and not the fulfillment of my selfish desires. Now, as I am being sanctified and pursuing servant-hearted love, I, am, I do find joy and I do find happiness in that. But if we're, lis but if we're listening to the world... The voices of the world are telling many, many couples in the, in, in the world and in the church that you need to do what makes you happy. You need, to, you need to go for you. You do you. And sadly, many have listened to that voice. And many marriages have been destroyed because people have listened to that voice. In contrast to that, James says there's another voice that's coming down from heaven. And that voice is telling us the true way to life and happiness and joy and sanctification. And that voice says that you need to be gently wise with your spouse. That you need to be peaceable, pure, and gentle, and open to reason. Open to reason. What if our marriages and our discussions and our arguments that we sometimes have with our spouse, what if they were dictated by reason? Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 around verse 7, he says, love does not insist on its own way. It's not my way or the highway. That's not how love operates. It's reasonable. That's how this wisdom operates. It's full of mercy and good fruits. We talked about it this morning, but does your spouse need mercy? I know I do. I need mercy. I need a lot of it on a daily basis. Are there days, this might be hard for you to believe, but are there days where your spouse just wakes up on the wrong side of the bed? Are there days where your spouse just wakes up cranky? Are there days where you wake up cranky? There are days where I wake up cranky and I don't know why I'm cranky. I just am not in a good mood. And then I've got to come up and see Parker in his OU shirt and uh, <clears throat> makes me even crankier. No. We're unified. Unified. Gosh, you mercy. Gosh, you mercy. Gosh, you mercy. Um, so uh, when, 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 when we have these interactions with our spouse and they're needing us to show them some mercy, are we willing to show them that mercy? And then ultimately, whatever voice we follow is going to determine the outcome. He said, if you follow selfish ambition and jealousy, I guarantee you that is a recipe for division. Every vile practice is going to come from selfish ambition and jealousy. But if you follow the way of wisdom, notice this. There will be, in verse 18, a harvest of righteousness that is sown in peace. Now when you're sowing those seeds of peace, sowing seed... It's not easy work. Sometimes you have to do it out in the sun. Sometimes it takes a while before you see any growth and you see the harvest. But he says a harvest of righteousness will be experienced by those who patiently are peaceful and merciful to their spouse and within the context of their, their family. Now I know those aren't easy words. I know that's a very personal lesson for us. But marriage, anytime we talk about marriage, is very personal. Because not only do two people bring our own weaknesses and our own baggage into a marriage, you, with your spouse, have experienced things that I have no idea about. That the elders have no idea about. I've experienced things within my marriage that you don't know about. And you'll never know about. We all have our own struggles. We all have our own weaknesses. Our own failings. The question is, what voice are we going to listen to? What voice is going to di dictate what kind of harvest we glean? That's the question we answer each and every single day. It's the question we answered when we first got married, but then we've got to choose to listen to the right voice, heavenly or earthly. And that decision is for you this afternoon. If you have any need, 
this afternoon. Why don't you come as together we stand and as we sing.